Hello everyone and welcome to the Lit Up Lightworker podcast, empowering you with simple, practical, step-by-step spiritual tools and practices to follow your purpose and light up the world. You can access all episodes of the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher and TuneIn and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos and interviews all about finding and following your life purpose. My name is George Lizos. I'm a spiritual teacher, psychic healer, the number one best-selling author of Be The Guru, Lightworkers Gotta Work and Protect Your Light. And today I have with me Amy Lee Mercury. Amy Lee Mercury is an internationally acclaimed medical intuitive with over 20 years of experience. She specializes in spirit guides with a focus on shamanism, healing your home and holistic wellness. Using a combination of spirituality and science, Amy's job is finding the root cause of imbalances in the body. Clients come to her with health issues that they have not had results healing elsewhere, and Amy helps them to get to the absolute root cause of the problem and put together a plan of how to fix it. She's helped thousands of people find the root causes of numerous mild and moderate medical conditions and uncover their body's wisdom to heal permanently. Amy is a best-selling author of 15 books, media personality, holistic health expert, and mystic teacher. She instructs internationally, sharing Meet Your Goddess Guides, Ancestral and Karmic Shamanism, and the Healing Hope Masterclass. Amy, welcome to the Lit Up Lightworker podcast. Hi, George. I just love talking to you, and I'm sure your listeners know how awesome you are. I am so happy to have Mm -hmm. you here for the second time to chat about your new book, The Holistic Home. But before we chat about that, I want to hear a little bit about your experience about finding spirituality and healing in your home. Yes. So um, I've been, you know, I've been on my medicine path since I was 18. So that would be, wow, 26 years now. It's a long time. Um, And you know, from, from an early age in that, in that path, I had my, I had my medicine teacher and I had all of the things that I was learning as far as, you know, our own sort of spiritual development, our intuitive development, our health and all of that. And then I started working with clients about 20 years ago. And pretty soon after that, I began to get um, guidance for these clients about things that need to happen in their homes that had to do with their health or their lives. So that started to open that door for me. And so I began to, you know, study different traditions as far as what's done from the shamanic perspective, from the Taoist perspective, which is Feng Shui and traditional Chinese medicine. And then from the Vedic perspective, which is Ayurveda and something called Vastu, which is the kind of Vedic type of Feng Shui, basically, although it's pretty different. Um, And so I've been integrating those things into my life for a long time and they work. So it's been a a long road of that and seeing a lot of great results for me and clients. I love that. And I love that you blend together different kinds of modalities. And I love how different like spatial energetic modalities around the world coincide in their, in their root and what they share. I remember um, Feng Shui, was my the number that the first spiritual modality I ever practiced. It's how I got wow. started on my spiritual path. So I I, I love Feng Shui. I'm obsessed yes. with Feng Shui. I've never studied it like but like properly, but I, I'm sure will at some point knowing me. Yes. And while I was reading about Feng Shui, because I'm Greek, with we're both Greek. Yes. Uh, to, you you are to like part Greek. So yeah. I started Greek. yes mm-hmm. I started researching and reading about the the Greek energetics of space. And there is, there is a book called, in Greek though, which is called the Greek Feng Shui. And it's Neat. about the art of f which is basically the art of feeling good and being good. Yes. And it basically says that the ancient Greeks just decorated their houses and built their temples in spiritual energy points yes. and decorated their their, their home so that the energy flows in some way very similar to what the Chinese did with Feng Shui. So it's very Wonderful. interesting how they all blend together. So I'm curious, how is our home connected with healing? What is it about home and healing that coincide? Great question. Um, so 
our body is this, you know, internal incubator of our energy. And then the first layer of its out picturing is our home because we spend probably the most time we spend anywhere in our home, unless we're traveling or something. But, you know, otherwise, especially now, a lot of people work from home. You and I do anyways. We yes. have, we, we have probably for a long time, but for so many more people, either way, you're sleeping at home, you're resting at home, you're eating at home. We spend a lot of time at home. So it's the first layer of the way, the place where our internal energy meets our external environment. And so at the same time, when we're allowing external energy from the world to come to our internal being, our body, our home is the intermediary. And so the way that we orient our home, we flow the energy through our home, the, you know, the focuses and the resonances that we, that we put in the home from an energetic standpoint help to take the energy that's maybe raw from the outside and shape it. So to shape the way it comes into our lives and ultimately our bodies. So it's basically like manipulating the energy of the house and directing yes. it in a way that it helps help yes. us grow both spiritually, mentally, yes. physically, etc. So you yes. talked about the different modalities that you merge, that you yes. blended together. Can you talk a little bit about those modalities and what aspects of them you brought into the book, The Healing Home? Absolutely. So I was trained um, at 18. I met my late medicine teacher, Lori, and she trained me in an oral tradition that was passed down to her from her teacher. And then her teacher's teacher uh, was an American Indian in the Southwestern United States. So I was trained in that oral tradition. Uh, I mean, there's elements of it that are written about mostly, I know my books talk about it too, but there's a lot to it that, that isn't shared. So that was a one basis. And then plus my shamanic training overall, which has, you know, been 25 years of that, um, so from that shamanic perspective, there's cross-cultural elements, actually similar to how I teach shamanism to my students, uh, we, blending things cross-culturally, but we use a lot of ritual and a lot of ceremony to consciously infuse intention into the home. So mm -hmm. again, that energy coming externally and our internal energy going outward, those two opposing forces flowing in and out of us, our homes and our lives and how we use ritual and ceremony and, and shamanic technique to, to manipulate those, to create, um, in shamanism, we have extraction and retrieval. So to extract density from the home and to retrieve the energy we want for the home to create what we desire. Then we talk Taoism, which is uh, feng shui, traditional Chinese medicine, all of that. So we really go into the five elements uh, from the Taoist perspective and how we can use those elements and energies and a lot of elements from feng shui, obviously, to create the life we desire and to do that through the home. And then the Vedic perspective is Ayurveda, chakras, all of that, and also something called Vastu, which is sort of the Vedic version of feng shui. It's actually pretty different. So then we use those elements and how we do that in the home and also like the chakras we can optimize and how we can optimize our chakras using things in the home and vice versa and the concepts and the ways that we can kind of bring this holistic balance. I love that. And I'm excited to hear all about the practices, like some of the practices that you, you teach in the book. But before we go there, I want to hear a little bit about the kind of rooms in the house that you feel are most important to optimize energetically yes. for healing. What are these? Yes, good question. So for healing, we really need to optimize the bedroom. So cornerstone of our health is our sleep and, and also really our love life and stuff too. But especially for this side of it, for sleep, we have to optimize the bedroom. It's just critical. And then also to optimize the kitchen and the dining area and the areas where we consume our food, because we want to be able to have rest and digest. So we go into these parasympathetic nervous system responses from a health perspective to allow our bodies to regenerate. So to optimize the bedroom, there's tons of stuff we can do for romance and love. There's a lot of that in the book too, but there's also things about in the bedroom, we need to have, um, for example, lower EMFs. So we don't have a lot of electromagnetic frequencies impacting our health. Um, any blue light, anything that any light in the bedroom, any artificial light is going to inhibit our melatonin production and the ability of the receptors that grab that melatonin to grab it and use it 
at the right time. And then also exposure to blue light, which is screens and everything like that, artificial light after dark is contrary to our circadian rhythms. I, I mean, the epidemic of people not sleeping and having poor sleep is cr crazy. I mean, as a medical intuitive, I hear about it every, probably every single day. And that's because we have phones in our faces all the time. So one of the things we can do is just get some blue light blocking glasses. And when it gets dark, we put those things on. And then, yeah, you want to watch TV? You want to look at your phone? Okay, but I'll tell you what, two hours after you put those things on, you're ready for bed. You haven't been exposed to light telling you it's daytime. I love that. I definitely need to get my blue glasses. I've been procrastinating doing it and I have problems sleeping. So it's definitely yeah. like on my to-do list first thing. The thing. And I want to share a little story about like, the bedroom because I 100% agree with you. It's so important to optimize it. Yeah. My dad was diagnosed with cancer a few years ago. Sadly, he passed Ooh. away last year from it as well. But mm -hmm. when we were just doing everything we can to find out the root cause. Yeah. Because I douse, I use my dowsing rods yes. to, to check for um, electromagnetic stress and also geopathic stress in the yes. house. And yes. I found two geopathic stress lines crossing yeah, through his it. bed, exactly where the lungs was what, uh -huh. when he had the cancer. Yeah. And of course we bought like an, an alpha dynamics kind of a gadget that essentially yeah. sends out the frequency of the earth, the alpha frequency to, to neutralize that. So it's so important to pay attention to that because as yes. you said, we sleep there. We spend at least like six to eight times every single day there. So whatever yes. energy is going on within our bedroom is affecting us. And yes. I also had a line passing through me right now for the first two years of, of being here. And then wow. after finding out, I just created like great work and I blocked yeah. it. So good. Thanks. Good job. So let's talk a little bit about the tools you teach about in the book. So You've just shared with us the blue lights, which is great yes. for the bedroom to just prepare ourselves. But yes. can you give us like different practical tools that we can use in different rooms of the house? Let's start with the bedroom. Let's start with the bedroom. So in the bedroom, we want plenty of yin energy. So you want cozy things, lots of pillows, blankets, carpets. And, you know, and it's fine if you don't have like wall to wall carpet. That's kind of good in a lot of ways so plenty of like plush carpeting curtains everything soft and cozy yin is equal to rest it's also equal to um cuddling and some elements of you know sensuality and stuff like that so you want plenty of yin and then in the bedroom if you desire partnership if you're in a partnership and you want it to be healthy happy or you desire partnership then you need to create a bedroom that is symbolic of that too so you have things in groups of two so mm. instead of one or five pink candles pink is a good color for the bedroom you have two candles you have things you know you just group things in little groups of two two little rose quartzes two little lovebirds you know two little owl statues things in groups of two and then uh same thing if you desire that then you also want two nightstands and in the non in the nightstand that's not yours you can't clutter it with your stuff you need to leave the space so the person whether they're really there or symbolically there has the opening to be there i love that so <laughs> what is the next room that we have to optimize for healing i think it's a really good idea to optimize your foyer if you're career minded ah, okay. because the energy of your of your front door and your foyer if you have it or whatever enters your home that's where all the energy enters your house first of all second of all it's the energy of your career so in that area we want to make sure that the front door you know it's not like blocked so you don't have a bunch of stuff in front of it if there's a mat, it needs to be a welcome mat, not like a mat with a skull and crossbones on it or something. And um, if your door opens out instead of in, like that can deflect energy. Yeah. So then there's some different things you can do from the Feng Shui perspective as far as like hanging a, if you like hanging a mirror, you know, outside and then it bounces the picture of the door back yes. at the house. There's a lot of different stuff you can do with that or you can use a crystal or something to help with that, like a hang, little hanging crystal. Um, and then also for the front door. So to think about the energy of water, that's the energy for that area of the, of the Bagua, if we're thinking from a Feng Shui perspective yes. and to think about the water coming in. So I, I created a painting cause I didn't really find one that I liked. So I just did one myself cause I like to do art. 
um, and it's abstract, but it's kind of like a like a stream of water coming in, and I and I could paint it according to my house, so I could think of it coming in that direction in the front door, and since it's me, it has a lot of sparkles on it. I love that. I, I actually <laughs> you'd like it. Yes, I would love it. <laughs> I actually also put a painting of a running river as soon as I Perfect. get through my door on the right to allow the water to come in. Right, that's I, it. like I intuitively felt like I had to go there. Yeah. That's that's Perfect. the place because you're bringing that in. Yes. Um, and so the colors for that area are blue and black, which yes. aren't that exciting, but they are like symbolic of water. So is yes. glass. So you could also have like a, a, a glass, you know, a wavy undulating glass yeah. sculpture there. So, you know, just something that's symbolic of bringing water and, and all of the chi, because the chi, you know, in all of these traditions, the chi will come in the front door. In Vastu, the Vedic tradition it also comes in the windows. Um, but especially in Taoism, it's the front door. Shamanically, it's the front door. So yes. the chi comes in the front door and then it enlivens the house. So we just want to make sure all the chi can come in. Yes. Okay. It's so important for healing, for career, for anything in like, Everything. like general well-being. Yes. Okay. So what's another room that we can optimize for healing and how do we do so? So I think it's really important. We spend a lot of time in our living rooms, like our the place where we might like watch shows or hopefully we read and we're not always on screens but you know some of us I tend to eat in the living room if I'm if like it's yes. just me I don't know I kind of it's more cozy than like sitting at the table yes. so I think it's a really important room to optimize because we spend a lot of time in it so to me this room also needs to be more yin our home office can be yang it can be active our living room needs to be yin it needs to be cozy I have a purple couch with like five purple blankets and fuzz, you know fuzzy pillows and all that and you know all the things that would bring that yin in and then the warmth is really important to bring into the living room so that could be um candles depictions of candles um images of things that make you feel happy that is part of what enhances our health it's just things that we can look at that make us feel happy so whether that's family pictures, things like that. And that's the other thing is you can use the living room to foster family harmony. So you can use things like the color green, things like bamboo, things that are columnar, things that are made of wood because in Taoism, it's the wood element. The thing that's awesome about that too is when we optimize the family and the harmony side, um, in Taoism, that also helps us optimize our money for household expenses. So that's a way if we want more money to pay the bills, we can use the living room, we can use the wood element things. Um, it's also spring, which is wood element season in the northern hemisphere, so it'd be a good time to make those changes. Um, I love how they yeah. are connected to the way we live essentially. So our they home are. reflects our lifestyle and each and the purpose, the function of each room energetically and practically coincide. Yes. Now, Let's talk a little bit about the mistakes people make when it comes to their houses that create most of the problems. In your Ooh, experience, yeah. what are those mistakes? Good question. Mistakes are uh, leaving the Wi-Fi on all night so you can't sleep. Mistakes ah. are bringing VOCs into the home, like fragrance that is an essential oil, bringing toxins into the home. These things affect our health. So we have to kind of overhaul our cleaning supplies and our toiletries and things like that and then people i think also make the mistake of um in in our society now of going really yang like wanting this grandiose giant cavernous space mm. and when that's the case then we're lacking warmth we're lacking connection we're lacking rest especially in a place like the bedroom or the living room where it's like so yang and not adding elements that bring the cozy in. That's a big mistake. And people wonder, gosh, why are we like not happy in this big, awesome house we have? Because it's so huge and it's so spacious because it needs the warmth. It needs the softness to balance the big cavernous, echoey, shiny side of things. I love that. And I never thought about turning off the Wi-Fi. I just oh. always took it for granted. So I need it. I need to. I'm going to As start an HSP, doing that. it's such a game changer. Yes, and I mm -hmm. like attest to like changing the uh, the cleaning materials. I changed everything to like organic Good. essential oil based ones, and I felt yeah. such a difference Don't you? in the energy of the house. Everything, everything, and with and the Wi-Fi, yeah. there's timers, and there's also um, something called 
the JRS Eco router. It comes from the Netherlands and it's really neat. It's an Asus router, but they've installed firmware on the router. It's a little bit of a challenge to set it up, but once it's set up, it only emits the Wi-Fi when your devices say, hey, we need Wi-Fi. So that uh. means like 90% of the time it's semi-off. It, I mean, is... all routers could do this and they should, but they don't. Wow, I love that. That's like so like like life-changing. Thank you it for is. introducing that and sharing that gadget as well. I think many yeah. people will benefit from that. Oh yeah, and goodness. even if you don't have time to get it, just unplug your router at night. Yes, easiest thing to do about it. And, and then plug it in in the morning. Plugs. Exactly. Yeah. You don't need it anyway, so what's the point of having it on? Exactly, exactly. That is perfect. Amy, thank you so much for sharing all these fabulous tools with us. And I can't wait to read the book and, and learn even more. And I can't wait for everyone to experience the magic of your new book, The Healing Home. Can you please let everyone know where they can get the book from and yes. how they can work with you? Yes, I can. So that is going to be available everywhere books are sold. If you're in the U.S., it's in all the Barnes & Noble. Uh, it'll be Amazon. It'll be barnesandnoble.com, indie books, this, you know, everywhere. And... Um, you can find me on amyleemercree.com, which is where you can find all of my work and books and medical intuitive stuff. And George knows I'm pretty active on Instagram at amyleemercree too. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. All the links will be in the show notes for everyone to, for everyone to access and wishing you a lovely rest of your day.